Back again. Back here again. A little bit of a slow start this morning. Had fun last evening. Had the ladies over. I think we sat here for four hours. Oh my god, it's going to be some editing, man. Because they, uh, due to various reason, reasons, they need their identities um, kept private. And as well as uh, one of the main places um, where they grew up private. Which is no problem, right? But the slip-ups were crazy. And I just put, have to put a hand signal to make sure I saw my hand when I do the editing part on where to stop it. It's, that's going to take a little time to do that editing, right? But whatever. And this is pretty good, but we're uh, we're friends. You know what I mean? So we're friends. So we just start bullshitting, and it's not like the camera's there. We talk about all sorts of shit. But uh, it's kind of funny. So uh, one of the ladies... As soon as we start driving home, I give him a ride home last night, and then she rattles off about six or she starts shot, shotgunning Sasquatch uh, experiences by her and friends and family, one after the other, which we missed out on during the video, so that kind of made me laugh. But anyway, for the most part, I can tell you this um, there's a lot of things um, these friends of mine and their families and neighbors had lifelong experiences with these beings. But none, none of it was ever terrifying. Ever. Never saw the red uh, blazing eyes. They kind of coexisted. And um, they definitely feel it is a spiritual being for sure. It can become both of the flesh and non-flesh type of being. Anyways, I'll save that for the video once you get it all edited up and I'll share it with you. But it, it, uh, it went down. There's about four hours, and I'll have to condense that down and uh, get that shared with everybody right away. Now, moving along, I'll have to contact some other people to um, to get them in here and share what they know, and I'm going to get going on that right away, too. Knocking things off as they come and sit in line. Now, what's this... I don't know what this is. I'm going to read this, get into this, get into sharing right away. <laughs> this is titled Sooner Sasquatch. Hi, Steve. Chris Dickinson from Oklahoma here again. Yes, you can use my name. Thank you for, thank you for reading my previous emails. If they helped even just one person, then it was worth writing in. I've had a lot of experiences involving these beings since I got into researching back in 2015. Nothing we haven't really heard before here, so I won't bore everyone with all of my interactions. I'm not a quote researcher, end quote, just really interested in the subject and want to know why we've been lied to and why the subject is kept secret by our so-called government. This will probably be my last email as I don't go looking for these things anymore. It's kind of a waste of time. You don't find these creatures, they find you for the most part. Agreed and can be very dangerous doing so. My old channel, Sooner Sasquatch, which I'm locked out of now thanks to YouTube and Google's two-step verification, has basically everything I experienced if anyone wants to check it out for free. Not here to promote that channel, so you can leave that part out if you want to, Steve. That's up to you. I completely understand. I did promote your channel on there, on there Steve, towards the end before I got locked out, and here's why. In all the years I was doing the so-called research in the woods, I've learned more from your channel in a much shorter time, and I wanted my viewers to have that same opportunity. But here's the main reason for writing this email. During my times in the forest all over the state of Oklahoma, I was followed home by something I couldn't see on a few different occasions. I didn't know what I didn't know what was going on at first. The first time it happened, it happened. Whatever this thing was, me and my girlfriend lived in an apartment and had moved out, and it moved out, leaving this entity behind in that apartment. One. Everything was fine at the new house. Two years later, we ended up moving again to another town. While living there, while living there, we was both doing hikes all over the state. And remember, Oklahoma is full of Native American territory, burial grounds, etc. We 
were both followed home by something very dark. It haunted us both any time we were at the house. I won't go into detail, but it was scary shit. It wasn't until a conversation with a coworker that we figured out what was going on. She knew a lot about the spirit world and helped to rid the house of whatever was there. A crazy and very scary life experience and lesson learned. My point is, if you are going out looking for these creatures, be very, very aware there are other things out there that you cannot see. And having, a, having an open mind to findings, these creatures, and having an open mind to finding these creatures also leaves the door open for other things, such as the spirit world, to come right in. So, keep that in mind, please. I don't want anyone to go through the stuff we did. I think speaking out loud that you are protected by God can help. Anyway, Steve, thank you again for what you're doing. May God bless you and your family. Chris Dickinson from Oklahoma. Well, there you go, Chris. Everybody, I mean, appreciate that that honest email, Chris. And uh, that was a word of caution last night from the ladies as well. They said, don't do it. Don't do it. And they were raised to no to not communicate with them and tell them no and that they do have dominion over them in a way right can be a confusing topic right lots going on um and i do agree with you i would imagine it's pretty tough to deny the fact that listening to all of the people advances you in a rapid pace when it comes to knowledge obviously I mean, if I was to, uh, I'm trying to picture this. If I was to start a channel on YouTube dedicated to the existence of Sasquatch slash Bigfoot, and then I just videotaped myself running around the forest here, and that was it, and shared what I saw and did and felt, and et cetera, et cetera. Man, that could probably go on for a whole lifetime of not really changing too much. I would imagine I'm picturing it, right? But if you listen to all the people around the world in one place, rapid fire, nonstop, and pick out the patterns, <laughs> your brain's going to explode with all that new knowledge, right? So yeah, man, I do get it when you said that. You probably learned a lot more just following all the people here in a short time, right? There's a lot of people out there cautioning, don't bring it home. But like I said, if or when I do, well... When I do, I said I would, so I will. But when I, unless something comes up that blocks me, when I go down there, like I said, I'm not, I'm not looking to go anywhere. Just go dive into the woods and offer myself up to whatever it is some other human beings are interacting with. Not that stupid. What I am, my main, one of my main goals is to go down there and meet these purple people firsthand, look into their eyes and feel their energy. First off, foremost. And then from there, my gut will know exactly what to do. Exactly what to do in about a tenth of a second. Now, we also spoke about that last night quite a bit. Me and the ladies, we, we share that knowledge of knowing. It's like when they first came to my home. They might have been my first official stalkers. Because <laughs> we were sitting here at the house and we got, you know, you got the driveway and there's a gravel road and then we got a pasture on the other side of the road and then another gravel road above that and there was there's a car sitting there and also these ladies started cutting through a pasture come towards the driveway i'm like huh what's going on man and that's how we met and i'm fully grateful that they did that but anyway um my one elder superhero lady said flat out she'd been watching all the videos on here but she needed to meet me and look into my eyes for her uh final decision on whether or not I would be worthy of a person to talk to and spend time with and she knew right away as did I with them but that's how it happens right so uh, David Nino and I were talking about that the second we started talking it's like boom Nino said it first it's like a lifelong friend a brother from another mother just like that and and the, he refers to it as finding your tribe when you find your people but you do know when you meet people the right people you know instantly babbling let's get into it this 
email is titled Red Supernatural UFO Sighting 1997 Oregon Traveling north on I on 15 from Oregon to Washington there was five people in our Ford Explorer we did not have cell phones with cameras back then no one even no one even brought a camera so we have no proof of this we saw a UFO just about 100 feet in the air just hovering so close if it had windows you could have seen an alien's face in the window is a standard round shape with a dome type top it was spinning and stationary we pulled over to observe the silver shiny look no lights just the craft the dome part had a strip around it that could be considered to be a viewing window area we looked around and noticed no other cars were pulling over we just sat there watching wondering why nobody else stopped the weird thing was one of the teenagers in the back seat could not see what four in the vehicle could see we kept saying can you see that it's right there she said no it's not there see nothing how can four others see it and one person cannot we ended up just leaving as it sat there spinning it went on our way a year later I saw a video with John Paul Jackson with streams ministry did a seminar with colorful colorful orbs showed up in front of a group of 400 people 16 people came up front and said we do not see any colors flying around the rest of the group gasped in loud ahs at the recorded video in the recorded video sorry he said that is how you can tell it was not my trick it proves that I do not use lasers to put on a light show this is how God shows you it is supernatural end of email all right well there's obviously somebody who saw something crazy and the main part of the bewilderment was how come somebody right beside me can't see that we are all seeing and then use that other experience on video as an example and not having a clue well, this got something to do with energy our vibration our vibration or any our energy is dialed in at how come uh, one of the big mysteries for me that I would mind an answer to is how come so many people lay in a coma in a tent while somebody's shaking the shit out of them with something growling outside the tent and they don't even they don't wake up they can't wake them up how many times we heard people saying that here my husband wouldn't wake up he wouldn't wake up I was shaking him he wouldn't wake up and this thing was banging on the whatever right that's a huge pattern and something I mean it's it's so difficult for us being mere simple humans to even how do you even come up with an answer you know you can't even it's even hard for us just to make up a bullshit answer for what's going on right like think about it I don't I have any clue what's going on with that I mean I got a weird idea but I can't really put it into words and if I was t requested to come up with, well, just make up an answer, make up a bullshit answer for that. How come people sleep through it and others don't? And it's screaming, vibrating your your ribs outside of the tent flap, and one person is sleeping through it. And you can't wake them up. Think up an answer for that. Just think up a stupid answer, right? It's very confusing very confusing now what's this one Steve oh mark this is red hello and God bless I'm glad you have made it home safely from your overseas adventures thank you for the kind words please keep my name confidential as you have shared many of my encounters and I have more to share with you in the near future the purpose of this email is that I have a real definitive problem real definite problem please see attached photo I took this photo in pure innocence of not knowing what it was if you open the photo you can see two bright lights in the sunset sky and there is no visible evidence that there is any aircraft or any nature in the picture no contrails no sound no movement it spooked that crap out of me and my girlfriend I don't think anyone can explain what this is I assure you that the picture is not being edited and I have had no issues whatsoever with this cell phone camera 
The lights are in the sky, and nothing but sky is around them. I took the picture February 6, 2024, from the Walmart parking lot in New Bern, North Carolina, USA. The time is approximately 6.15 p.m. Please let me know what you think, and possibly there is a qualified answer besides UAP. Many thanks. Happy trails. All right. There you go. I know the only question I would have is if it was a uh, possibly, I don't know, I wasn't there. If the photo was made inside of a, behind a pane of glass, inside from a vehicle, it is a slight possibility that's a reflection on the glass. If there's no glass between the phone and the sky, I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the people will comment in the section below. Maybe somebody was right there at the same time and saw the same thing and saw a little more. Don't know. There you go. Shared. Here's another one. Next. Gotta love hearing from the people, man. Everybody. It's the only way to go in life, I'll tell you what. For your, for your eyes only. Alright. Sorry about that. Next one, I'll have to get back to that. A lot of people email me in without wanting to be public about anything. Oh, side note. One thing you're going to hear when I get this video edited up. Um, one of the ladies, well, their identity is withheld, so I don't have any problems sharing this part. She has had extensive, um, extensive interactions with the military as she is a very qualified programmer is a polite way of saying hacker <laughs> she knows a lot man anyways she knows a man in the military a doctor who worked on a man in Afghanistan who had his leg ripped off by a red headed giant interaction and lost that part of the leg she knows this guy, and he actually left after that due to PTSD, and and now she said that he can't really quite relate to life, civilian life, and he's gone back. He's gone back. And I said, well, when did, was the last time you heard from this guy? She's like, two days ago. I said, if you could, could you please see if maybe he might share what he knows with us, and I'll keep, I'll keep it absolutely com confidential, not share shit. And she said she's going to contact him and see if he will. How random and crazy is that? There you go. Sorry. Next, South Dakota. Is the title of this email. Hello, Steve. I thought I would share the story that I was told by the cable repair guy that came to my home. I had to have the cable guy come to repair my Wi-Fi connection. He saw that I was looking at YouTube videos of Bigfoot. So, he asked me if I believed that they were real. I told him yes. Well, he then told me a story about how him and his brother were up in the woods by, by Nemo, N-E-M-O, and got one of his four-wheelers stuck in a mud pit that he was trying to drive through. So he got the cable from the winch and strap to wrap around a tree. He went over to a tree and was stunned to see very huge footprints in the mud around the tree. He said they had to be at least 18 inches long and 6 inches wide. Said that the prints looked fresh, and he said he thinks it was standing behind the tree watching them. They got the four-wheeler out of the mud and went home. Okay? That's all. <laughs> Sluter. All right, man. Oh, Scooter. You spelt your name wrong in the end of it. There you go. Another one. That's what happens to me. That always happens to me. It's just random, man. Doesn't matter where I am. If something comes up, start talking. Somebody knows it, or had an experience or saw something in somebody who you wouldn't have thought in a million years, right? Speaking of that getting stuck, stuck in the mud, um, I think I'm going to share this. I knew someone years back whose dad was a conservation officer. That's a wildlife. That's a fishing game cop game warden and uh they were 
at a small lake just south of Nanaimo, British Columbia on Vancouver Island. And they were in the conservation, the officer's truck, and they were stuck at a pullout at, a, at the small lake in the mud, full on stuck. And I forget what they were doing. I don't remember the abs, the intimate details of how they were getting out or who the contact or they're waiting for somebody to get them, whatever. Anyway, he said that something started absolute screaming, shrieking, basically at them from just across the other side of the small lake. He said it was absolutely terrifying. And his dad, the conservation officer, he had a 30 out of 6 in the truck and he just said, get the rifle out of the truck. Get the rifle out of the truck. <laughs> and, they, and apparently they had to sit there and wait for quite a while to some, until somebody got them. But I don't know why. Some of these stories people share with me along the ride of life, I, I never seem to forget. And they have a little bit of impact. And that lake, if you're traveling south on Vancouver Island, that little lake was on the east side of the highway. Which is a little bit surprising for me in a way because that's where the more populated areas are. I forget the name of the lake, but I can look it up. All right, who's next? Who is next? Mark, this is red. This is titled My Story. Hi, Steve. I'd heard a story of a wild man in the west of my state when I was in grammar school at a book fair. For some reason, I thought no more of it. Silly of me, as you'll see. I grew up on a 100-acre farm. When I was five years old, my folks built a new house in a goat pasture and demolished our old 17th century farmhouse. The old farm was in a very rural area surrounded by other farms, large and small, with single-lane country roads. The new house was kind of a culture shock. No outhouse, no hand pump in the kitchen, etc. Modernity. I was the youngest, even got my own room. I enjoyed my new room, right up until a Sasquatch looked at me through my window one morning. It freaked me the F out. I didn't know what it was. Of course, I ran to my mother. She was skeptical, being a parent myself. Looking back, I understand her reaction. But with this memory, I can remember it like it was yesterday. And I'm 60 now. Yeah, we all do, right? Every single one of us remembers these experiences like it was frickin' yesterday. Like it was five minutes ago, more like. Fast forward, I'm 11, and my family goes to a movie. The big country, I think. Anyway, the first movie was a documentary about the contemporary American wilderness. This is my first viewing of the Patterson-Gimlin film. Let me tell you, I experienced something akin to a panic attack. That's what looked in my window. My reaction made my mother reconsider her skepticism. So I roamed the woods during the no so I roamed the woods during the no cell phone age. Hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, playing army, boy scouts with lots of boys my own age. Sometime during my twelfth year, myself and three neighbor friends went on a camp out. During this outing we set up along the rim of a rock quarry. From where we camped, there was roughly 12 to 15 foot steep drop down to the floor of the quarry. Sometime during the night, approximately one or so, we were sitting or laying, dozing around the fire, and something walked up the hill to the campfire, approximately six to eight feet from us. We all jumped, and whatever it was turned and skedaddled. We didn't even have a flashlight. Three seconds later, whatever it was screamed louder than anything we'd each heard before. It sounded like a woman being murdered. I've heard that before. <laughs> what? You've heard a woman being murdered before? That's not too cool. Or maybe you didn't mean that. So, I grew up, moved away, and got into the, got into the quote, work like a dog, end quote, thing. And fast forward, my folks pass on and the house is for sale. Married with the family now, I buy the property. Five years later, my two daughters, 11 and 2, want to go for a walk in the woods one afternoon. So we're about 500 feet up the hill 
suddenly we walk into what I can only describe as a garbage cesspool. At least that's what it smelt like. With absolutely no reason for it. And my hair stood up. I seriously sensed, some, sensed something. I had absolutely no curiosity. All I could even consider was my children's safety, and I was not armed. We beat a hasty retreat. I was on high alert for a while, but nothing else happened. I kept the, I kept the kids close to home for a long time. So I've heard some local stories about some stories, but they aren't mine. You know, I'd always heard these things were in the Pacific Northwest in Canada. I think they're everywhere. I think if they are here, 15 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean, they must be. The wild men I mentioned earlier were from Western Connecticut, Connecticut news stories, I believe, from the 1800s. There's a state forest sighting about 10 minutes from here, as reported by that group. I also met a guy from Westerly R.I., Rhode Island, who saw one there. This is still a lot of vacant, there is still a lot of vacant wooded land all over New England, believe it or not. We get bears here occasionally, so you never know. Nothing really important in here, but that's my story. I've been sitting on this for a long time. Thank you for this forum. By the way, after I bought the house, I measured the top of the window to the ground, nine foot six inches. Its eyebrows were even with the top of the window. I couldn't see the top of his head. It looked to me male. Not a pretty Sasquatch. Peace to you and be safe. Club member, Atlantic Division. Wow. There you go. What's up with looking in the windows, right? And another member of the club in a return. Didn't ask for it. I hope you got a big ass dog at home with those ch with those children. That's uh, about one hundred percent of the reason I, I I got Ruby. She is one big ass dog, and she is a natural protector. And uh, I just feel way better having her having her here in the property, especially when we have the the little kids come and stay in here. They're not allowed outside unless that dog's out with them. Period. There's big cats around here, there's bears, and there is some odd shit in my neighborhood. Thanks for sending that in, man. Absolutely appreciate you taking your time to send that out. Who's next? <clears throat> Excuse me. Almost paralyzed by fear about 50 years ago, as of 2024. Please don't share my real name, but you can call me Rocky. There's not many of us left who know who know me but but by that name, LOL. I've carried this memory my whole life, and I've never I've never shared it with anyone. I was about ten years old when it happened, and I'm almost sixty now. Compared to other stories you've shared, mine isn't very dramatic, but the fear I felt that day was so real and so paralyzing that I've never forgotten it. My dad was a Marine stationed at the Pentagon, which means we lived somewhere within driving distance of there. I think it was Woodbridge, Virginia. In those days, we had woods and deep forests everywhere. At least as far as a 10-year-old kid was concerned, I wandered into and explored those woods by myself all the time. I was my brother's baby sister and a bit of a loner, so almost no one ever went with me. I was never afraid. I loved it in the woods and walked along many creeks, collecting rocks and looking for treasures. My parents loved to go fishing, and we'd go to a nearby river or a tributary for the day. I had a favorite large rock that jutted out over the water, and I was good at catching bluegills while sitting on that rock. But one day, I got bored fishing and wanted to explore the woods. I got up and walked up the hill into the woods, but something fell off that day. After a few moments, I began hearing something walking in my direction. I'd never felt that sort of fear before, which is saying a lot when you consider other events in my life from before the, that moment. But that fear was so strong, I lost my breath. I looked into the woods to try to see what was walking toward me, crunching through the leaves so loudly 
but I can still hear those crunching leaves in my mind's memory to this day. I didn't see anything, but I certainly felt something in my spirit telling me to get out of there now. I left as quickly as I could while looking behind me as I went. I'd never heard of Bigfoot in those days, so I didn't have a clue what I was so afraid of. I think I do now because the fear I felt that day was deep and unreasonable. I compare that fear to stories I've heard from you and Scott Carpenter, and it seems to match. I am a Christian, and I've rebuked dark spirits in Jesus' name even in those days. Strange, I guess, that I knew about dark spirits, but not about Bigfoot. It's harder for me to get into the woods these days, but when I go, I first pray for protection in Jesus' name. Call for his warrior angels to protect me and carry my favorite sidearm, too. Good for you. Be safe, Steve. Thank you for what you do. All right. Appreciate you sending that in. Now, I wonder how many people are here that possibly had something happen there, then. Chances are pretty high, <laughs> right? The amount of people here, you know, when I, I made a post the other day, where's everybody from on the community page, and started ripping down there a little bit, looking, and there is literally, there's people here from countries I've never even heard of watching and listening to all of each other here. So there's a good chance somebody may be here that had something happen in that same place. And if you did, and you want to uh, connect up, share what you know here, put it in the comment section below, or you can email it to me at sharemystory@howtohunt.com, and then uh, we'll get it out to the people that way, if you want, or not. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm about uh, maybe one day, two days tops away from going into the mountains. I'm going to go steelhead fishing. I'm going to take you guys with me. We're going to go see some shit, get in the woods, get out of this frickin' indoor setting. Trail cam proof. And a story. All right, well, here we go. Oh, oh, we got photos here. Here we go. It's a long one. I'm going in. Trail cam proof any personal stories. The title of this email sent in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Steve, feel free to use my name. I really appreciate it when everybody does that in the very beginning because it saves me a lot of some, some potential grief, right? My name is Billy West, and I'm writing you from Michigan. I've been watching your videos for about a year now and want to just say thanks for the community and outlet you built up over the years. I've got a personal story of my own and some Sabe photos my friend shared with me last fall, which you can share with the listeners. I know photos don't do much for you, as they usually don't for me either, but I promise these are some of the most compelling photos I've came across since listening to you. Not to mention, <clears throat> excuse me, not to mention they're from a reliable personal source. A little about myself, I'm 28, I've always been an outdoorsman, born in Texas and raised in the middle of the Great Lakes. I've been fortunate to have seen most of the natural beauty this country has to offer, including the beautiful landscapes of rural Utah and remote Alaska. Sweet. I always, you know, I, if I could, if I could suggest to the world, if you love the outdoors, you got to see Alaska. That's all I got to say. Sorry about that. If there's plenty of trees, rivers, and a lack of people, I'm there. At the start of CVID, I briefly moved to Utah with a previous college roommate because I couldn't stand the retardation going on around me in my home state, especially with those close to me, whom I once had respect for. Only to realize that retardation would follow me across the country, even, even in remote towns and desolate places, such as Wyoming, as I would get confronted for not wearing a mask by multiple full-grown men with thick mustaches and beards sticking out the sides of their own making them anything but safe and effective. I digress, you get it. I get it. No strange experiences for me, but come 2021, my friend decided to stay at West while I moved back to Michigan to look for land and just explore the west side of the state, where there's a lot more shorelines and rivers to fish for fall salmon and spring steelhead, which I've done plenty of both. A year later, fall 2022, 
I started to get cabin fever from working from home. As a result, I decided to take my forerunner out to an area along a good salmon slash trout river to fish, camp, and just get away from it all for a weekend. The spot I decided to camp out in my forerunner was at the end of an AT trail, about 100 yards from the river, with a stagnant swamp and a clearly just built slash nearly finished makeshift wooden bridge going across it. I've attached pictures with the email to help you put you and the audience there with me. Upon arriving, I noticed a fresh deer hide floating in the pond. So clearly, whoever built that bridge was just camped out and hunting. As it was nearing the end of the rifle season, I was a little worried they might return that night and spoil my solo excursion. But I decided to stay, as the sun was already on the horizon. If I'm being honest, the child in me just wanted to help finish that damn bridge. It looked like something straight out of Narnia. Narnia? And so I did. Regretfully. The evening was super calm. I made a fire, cooked up some fish tacos over an open fire, and just took in the fresh fall air while listening to some music. That is, until around 9 p.m., when a storm started to roll in caught me by surprise as it wasn't in the forecast and the sun had already set hours ago leaving me with zero visibility on the oncoming clouds of the oncoming clouds i merely felt a sudden gust of wind roll in immediately followed by some light it didn't take long before i just decided to let the rain put an end to my fire and hopped in the forerunner to settle down for the night about an hour into the storm the wind really started to pick up it was just then that I heard two trees fall over within 10 seconds of each other. From the sound of it, they were about 60 yards or so out, paralleling the bank of the river. I was starting to get nervous that I might be parked under a widowmaker myself, but there wasn't much I could do at this point. Eventually, I fell asleep until around 2 a.m., when all of a sudden, an explosion from the roof of the truck shot my body up and nearly out of my sleeping bag. It sounded like a shotgun went off just outside my truck. I quickly checked my underwear for damage before feeling along the interior roof of the vehicle, as I was convinced it had to be caved in a bit from whatever could have caused that explosive sound. What I suspected was that it must have been a large branch or a small toppled tree. That's when I realized that none of the windows were cracked, which was strange. So I looked through every one carefully, both for fractures in the glass and to see if I could make out any shapes lurking around outside. And unfortunately, my tinted windows and the back sky of that cold night were only giving me, me giving me my own reflection back. With temperatures below freezing and my heart beating out of my chest, it's safe to say there was no way in hell I was stepping outside to check. So I grabbed my nine mil, locked the truck, for the tenth time and convinced myself it was a large branch that fell down from overhead. And with it being so cold, the sound was likely just amplified from the hard wood hitting the cold steel. Anyone who's cold started an engine for anyone who's cold started an engine or shot a rifle in sub freezing temperatures knows how much sound can get amplified in the cold. So this is what I told myself. I said in my head, well, on the bright side, I'll, I'll have plenty of free firewood for tomorrow. After about 30 minutes, the initial adrenaline dump finally ran its course, and I managed to fall asleep again. The next morning, I eagerly awoke just before sunrise, anticipating seeing a small tree or giant limb leaning against a truck. With daybreak faintly illuminating my sight, I opened the back door, crawled out, and to my amazement, there was nothing. And I mean nothing around or on my vehicle. I did find the downed trees from earlier in the night, about 30 yards away. And they were only about 15 to 20 feet tall, partially rotten and part of the same stump. So it wasn't a surprise they fell over in the storm. That made perfect sense to me. But after pacing around the site for several minutes, I had come full circle to the original realization that there was nothing even close to my vehicle other than a few small twigs about the size of my hand. So, I asked myself once more, 
what hit my vehicle at 2 a.m. I think maybe a nesting animal like a heavy raccoon or possum fell onto my vehicle. Though when this happened, the winds had already died down, which didn't make much sense to me. Not to mention I never found any fur or a body or even heard anything scatter away in the night. When critters are around, I can always hear them crunching leaves as they snoop around. I suppose it's possible, but it just seemed unlikely. But what else could it have been? The spot I was at... This spot I was at was at the end of a long, straight dirt road leading right to the riverbank. If anyone were playing a prank on me, I would have seen their headlights coming from a mile away. Not to mention the entire site was surrounded. Aside from the road to get there, aside from the road to get there was surrounded by green, algae-filled moat. Also, if this was someone messing with me, what human does that shit an hour after a big storm with random trees falling over in the woods? This is a public. This was public land, with no nearby houses for miles, only dirt roads, leading to more dirt roads, and your occasional cabin here and there. Needless to say, I've been back to that spot. I haven't been back to that spot. Exactly a year later, September 23, 2023, I was on a fishing trip a bit further north in the Lower Peninsula. I was camping out along the Manistee River near Tippy Dam with another friend of mine. That's a familiar location. One night we were cooking up a salmon I caught that day and some freshly forged chanterelles over a fire when I decided to show him your channel. I basically said, hey, check this guy out. He's an extreme wilderness guide and a man of the people who shares his and his viewers' wild experiences on his channel. I conveniently, conveniently left out the other esoteric stuff, fearing it would turn him off entirely, but as the video was playing, he seemed pretty into it. I could tell he was getting a little uncomfortable, though, as the video played on and the topic of Sasquatch eventually came up. I turned it off and asked, Too much? Suspecting he was starting to think I was a little out there. When he abruptly says to me, Hey, do you remember so-and-so from high school? I replied, Of course, as I actually grew up about a mile from him. He then goes on, he then goes into how this guy's dad recently retired and got a second property for deer hunting in northeast Indiana. Apparently, earlier that year, he bought a large property with a pond and decided to set up a trail cam overlooking this pond. My friend then goes, you know the family, right? I said, yeah, wondering where he's going with this. He then explains, so you know how they aren't looking for attention or pranks? I proceeded with, hmm, why? Then he goes, this guy's dad has been pretty freaked out the past few months after capturing this on his trail cam. I proceeds to show me two pictures of what clearly matches the description and pattern of what many of your listeners write in describing. He said his friend has no idea what to think of it other than that his dad is terrified to go on the property now. I've attached the photos, including my altered versions to this email. The alterations are to make it pop and really show how humanoid this thing is close up. I've also pointed to what I believe to be a demon or something's face, mouth wide open, entering the left side of the frame, right in front of the camera. Could be a natural distortion, though it's not there in the other pic. Taken seconds apart, suggesting it was mobile. Also, note how in one of the pics I altered, it looks like the standing being is leaving a trail behind it, where its back is hairy, but its front side looks like it's stepping out of its body, so to speak, almost like it's, dare I say, manifesting before our eyes or partially cloaking. For listeners, this thing looked to be six and a half to eight feet tall, thick all over, especially in the shoulders, and covered in, you guessed it, cinnamon red hair. It has a pointed head, and you can even you can even see this hairy beast reflection in the pond. I'm fairly certain it's legit after further inspection and just going off the reliable source, whom I've known since I was a little kid. In the photo, it looks like this thing was checking itself out in the water or holding an object, like animal feet or a club. I don't know. Whatever the case, I just wanted to write in and share my experience. As I've heard quite a few people writing in from the Midwest, and I would would have 
never suspected anything related to Sasquatch appearing in this part of the country. Yet here it is. Well, I can't say that these photos are 100% legit, or it wasn't some bodybuilder trying to scare his new neighbor. What I can say is that I trust I trust these photos over anything they put on the television or in any group online, as it came from a friend who doesn't even want to discuss the topic. Funny enough, after he shared these photos with me, we didn't talk about it again. It's just one of those things I guess people would rather compromise than dig deeper and attempt to come up with some answers. I get it, as the more I've dug in, the more questions I have now than answers. I just, under, I just don't understand the fear or ridicule. Probably one of the same thing. I guess we're all programmed a bit differently, and that's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. While I've never seen anything firsthand myself, I do nearly all my camping solo or with my dog. And when there's something in the area, let's just say you can feel it. Human or beast. There's a sixth sense we can't all tap into or ignore, as many do. God bless you, Steve. You and your channel are a gift to humanity. And I thank you for what you're giving. I thank you for not giving a damn what others think. We need more of that in this pussified world. <laughs> a world that's gone mad, that's for sure. Take care, and again, feel free to share the photos and my name. It's my truth, our birthright, and nobody can take that away from us. After all, friendship with this world makes you an enemy to the Most High. As long as we're aligned with God's will, I truly feel the hits we take on this earth are our reward in heaven. Be blessed, Eva, and listeners. Picks attached. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's the bridge. Kind of a cool railing built. There is the broad daylight photo of something or someone in the distance. I wonder what triggered the trail camera at that distance. That's too far for a trail camera. Unless it was a random trigger from wind on leaves. And there's the edited version. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, right? That's probably one of the uh, more eye-opening trail camera photos I've ever seen. I think what a lot of people are probably going to go, No, the arms are too short. It's not a Sasquatch. Who knows what position the arms are in? Who knows what or who that is? I don't know. Interesting. Thanks for sending that in, man. Um, now, you may want to possibly, maybe, send this video. Oops, sorry. Send this video to the people who own the property in, in Indiana. All right? And then, like you say, there's some people out there who struggle with the topic. Sounds like this man's having a shit-eating time when the pro property's purchased. And maybe, possibly, this channel will bring him a little bit of comfort in a way. Maybe. At least he, he'll know they're not alone. They're not crazy. <clears throat> it's safe to talk about it. And if he wants to learn, uh, this is a good place to do it. Just start sifting through all the videos and listen to all the people. Right? Listen to the people. Now, I don't know how long I'm going to sit in here. Probably not that long, but I'm going to cut it short because I have a lot of stuff to get caught up on. i got some people to contact, and i got some things to line up and uh, keep this ball rolling, and I'm going to get the ball rolling faster. Faster in different directions. So there. There you go. What was I going to add? Probably a lot. But I... I should start writing shit down, right? <laughs> then I can get what I really need to get shared. Shared instead of shutting the damn camera off and carrying on my day and then going, oh yeah, right, I should have shared this, right? But I'll keep my mouth shut because I'm probably not making any sense. So, share my story at howtohunt.com. Get that in. Get it off your chest. Get the knowledge shared. Get that shit show exposed if that's what you want to do too, all right? What else? What else? What else? Sarah still has her goodies on sale in her How to Hunt store. What else? I think that's it for now. I'm gonna go. I gotta get some. I've got a lot of editing to do on that video from last night. There's like four hours of video. Oh, what I did was I put a camera on the 
back shelf here, so we got the back of the heads and I sat over there and also got a GoPro ripping. Depending on which camera would do the be do the better, capture the better audio. And now today I've got two laptops here and two um webcams. I gotta get set up and get Sarah in here. And uh That'll be a smooth way to do a Zoom video, but with two people in here sitting across because of the Zoom feature I saw, noticed on Nino's video with us, it automatically goes back and forth to each person talking. You don't have to have a third person here uh, manually running the camera. So I'm going to get that ironed out today too, in anticipation of somebody coming and sitting right there with me. Rambling, babbling, I know. Uh, what else? There's that interview tonight at 6 o'clock. Who's watching? I know I'm going to watch. There's a lot of people out there who are, who don't have to. They're financially absolutely secure, but they are trying to point out some things that are going on in the world that we need to be aware of, and at least give us a choice to know or not, and listen or not. And they make a lot of, a lot of good comments, and a lot of good sense. Anyway, I'm rambling. I got too much zipping around between my ears. I apologize if I sound like a bit of a dipshit sometimes, is what it is. Especially when you don't give a shit what anybody thinks and you don't rehearse anything and nothing's nothing's uh, pre too pre-thought out before I come here, right? I'm out of here. I'll be back shortly.